of the world All my people Seek the truth Avoid the evil Learn Yahweh's ways Torah Life Ministries Come Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries and we're going to be doing this week's Torah portion and uh, we have an exciting uh, portion this week as always. We're in uh, this week, we're going to actually be reading Exodus 25.1 to 2719 and I'd have to say when a lot of people start reading the Bible or reading the original covenant which is known as the Old Testament as well what a lot of people do is uh, there's two areas they usually skip over and do not learn enough about and one of those areas is usually the names when they get to the names of the lineage of all these people it says this person begot that person and that person begot that person people usually skip over that the first time they read the scriptures and another thing they usually skip over is this week's chapter, which is uh, the actual building of the tabernacle and the information of the instructions of exactly how to build it. Uh, so the tabernacle and also Noah's tabernacle, which was his uh, the ark, that's another area, the building of the ark, that people usually skip over. So these are some common areas that people skip over. And it's important to read these areas and understand these areas because every single word in the scripture is given for a reason. So we want to make sure we don't skip over these areas and we read them and we study them at some point. And we're going to take a look at this week's uh, reading. And this week's reading, uh, we see uh, Yahweh giving Moses the instructions of how to build the sanctuary uh, in the desert. And exactly what to use and what's to go into the, the sanctuary or the tabernacle that was being built. And he, then he gets in in later portions about how to, uh, to do the sacrifices, who's to do what, and so on. But uh, in this week's Torah portion, we're going to be uh, reading it, and it, it says some pretty significant things here. Uh, the first thing I want to look at, we see Yahweh telling Moses not just where the people were to, to make their offer uh, or, their, or their sacrifices, but he told them how to do it. And that's one of the things I want to focus on this week. Because we've gotten away from, or we've lost, how to make uh, our sacrifices to Yahweh. Or, in other words, how to give in general. And, and there were two things, basically, that he, he told the people. See, first of all, it's in Exodus 25, 1 and 2. It says, he told Moses to tell the people, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred office, offerings, uh, except the contributions from all those whose hearts are moved to offer them. You see, so he told Moses exactly where these offerings are to take place in a tabernacle which was built before the Solomon built his temple for Yahweh, but in a tabernacle uh, that was built in the desert. And if you're not familiar with the terms tabernacle or, or sanctuary, what it was, it was like a big tent or a big campground in the middle of the desert. And, and he gave him the instructions on exactly how to build it, exactly what was to go in it, uh, who was to accept these sacrifices, the priest, and exactly the process of doing this. But the thing we need to focus on is he told them to give wholeheartedly. And when we give something wholeheartedly, we usually give our most valuable possessions. Now, even at that time in this week's reading, Yahweh even tells them what their most valuable possessions are. He says the gold, the silver, and the copper. Now, these things today are very valuable to us as well. Uh, but there are things back then that aren't as valuable today or we don't look at as valuable today, like things made out of goat hair. Now, what is goat hair? Well, it's not just taking a goat and making some scissors. Things that still have a high value, like cashmere, uh, is, is a very valuable material uh, that comes from goat hair. And people that don't know a lot about this, they, they can care less, but people that have uh, and collect cashmere clothing, that is a very valuable thing to them. And it actually is one of the warmest things that it keeps us very warm and it's, it's a great material. Uh, another thing, back then he had uh, the different stones, the onyx and, and, and the different other types of stones that are found. Today some of these stones are very expensive like diamond, diamonds and things like that but there are other stones that aren't as expensive today. Now there's spices that were very valuable back then that do not carry as much of value today. Uh, for example, you know you know, a lot of the essential oils we can get now at any store uh, at a very inexpensive price. But back then, it was so valuable, it was used as money. 
these oils and, and, and seeds and so on. So Yahweh told Moses to get people to give wholeheartedly and to get them to do it to give their most valued possessions. And here is what their most valued possessions are. So he told them to give, but he told them with value. And then he told them what their value was. So the people had very little room for error. Because he told them all these things, so they couldn't make up their mind, well, I'm going to give that, give that. No, he said, give them what was most valuable. Then he told them what was most valuable, and he showed them how to give it. Well, today, we've gotten so far away from that. Uh, so people, uh, they still have an idea of what is valuable to them. Uh, but they're not giving it with their full hearts. And some people don't even realize the value of the true things that they have. They value the, uh, the, the unimportant things more important than the important things. And they value the things uh, sometimes that the world doesn't value a a as a lot. But the bottom line is people's hearts are not into it uh, as much as they used to be. A and that's what Yahweh's really looking for. You know, when I first got saved, it was very amazing. I, uh, I was talking to the girl who was talking to me, and she said, you know, I said, well, what if this, what if that, what if that? And she said, you know, Paul, uh, Yahweh's not looking at our actions. He's looking at our heart. And I had this vision of him looking down at us and not seeing people's actions, just seeing our hearts and seeing those that were giving versus those that had a heart of taking or, or, or saving or hoarding. And, and it was a very impressive thing to me because I thought about it. You know, we might not be successful in everything in life according to the world's standards. We not, might not be getting the results that we desire to in life according to the world's standards. But that doesn't matter. If our heart's in the right place, uh, the result that we get is going to be the result that Yahweh wanted us to have according to His standards. So according to the world, we might not have won that race. We might not have got the value of something that we desired to get. But according to Him, we got more than that because we, 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 we did it with the heart of Yahweh. We did it with the heart of, of maybe giving or looking for somebody else's um, somebody else's uh, intentions or what they're looking for. We had their, their love in mind, love for them in mind. So we weren't looking at just looking for good in front of man and winning a race or, or, or winning a prize. We were looking at, what can I do to help this person? Which might pe put me in second place, but my heart wants to help this person. And I, instead of winning this race and looking like a winner according to the world standards, I want to look good to Yahweh, and I want to make the, Yahweh look good to the world and glorify Him by showing as a representative of Yahweh that I care more about other people than I care about myself. And that was the ultimate message of Yeshua Messiah. Uh, so that's what wholeheartedly giving is about. It's putting yourself uh, in second place and putting others before you. And this is what Paul's message was when he said, you know, I will sustain from... Uh, you know, meet for the rest of my life if it's going to help build a person up, or I'm going to, or if it's going to help, uh, if if it's going to uh, create a brother to stumble. We have to avoid things that are going to uh, help others to stumble and uh, cause others to stumble, and we have to do things to glorify Yahweh. And sometimes it is taking a back seat. And it's not only about giving something physical, like giving gold or silver or something we value. But there are a lot of rich people out there that might have a lot of these things. And if they give a little, well, so what? They still have a lot. You know, what's more impressive is a lady in the scriptures that had only uh, two coins and she gave them both. That was pretty impressive. She gave everything she had. That's really giving from the heart. But it's not just about giving something physical. It's also about giving things that we can't necessarily always see. And some of those things sometimes are uh, helping somebody out in a situation or even giving our time to somebody. You know, I know time is such a valuable possession today, but we might not always have time to, to do something. And, but if somebody calls us up and we say, you know what, I'm going to find time to help them out. So it's giving our time, and that's how we become a good representative of Yahweh, and, and that really helps. It says in 2 Corinthians 2, 9 and 7, it says, you must, each, you must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. But then it goes on to say, for Yahweh loves a person who gives cheerfully. So again, it's not just giving, it's giving with joy. Finding joy out of giving. And, and boy, you know, I definitely uh, love to give people things and seeing um, the joy they have when they're surprised. Wow, you actually gave me something? 
You know, I do this all the time. You know, I give out many of my videos and books for free. And, and this is when, you know, I, you know, people say they really want it and for some reason they can't get it. They don't have the money or something. Well, here, take it. And to see the smile of the joy in their face, but even better, to know that I am pleasing Yahweh because I am giving cheerfully to somebody. I am being a good representative of Him. And, and this is what it's about, as it says here. But 2 Corinthians 9, 8 goes on to say, you know, in 9, 7 it says, For Yahweh loves a person who cheerfully gives. But in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 it goes on to say, And Yahweh will generously provide all you need. So if we give, He provides what we need. And that's a very important thing because a lot of people uh, that are thinking with their mind and not with their heart think, well, if I give this valuable thing, I'll be without it. And that is not the way to think, you know, if your heart's for Yahweh. The way to think is, if I give, Yahweh's going to provide exactly what I need. So I am not going to, this is like the parable where Yeshua, uh, parable where Yeshua said, these, the, the, the guy that, that, that holds everything in his barn, you know, and he, and he doesn't give to the needy, and he doesn't give. Well, that's the problem that that's created, and he, he talks about that. It's not about saving and holding everything for ourselves. It's about giving to the needy and helping the needy. And uh, so we see that, and then he provides what we need, you know. But our needs, you know, have to be according to, to, to our wants, or our wants should be according to our needs, because if our, 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 our needs become our, uh, the wants of our fleshly desire, we're always going to have dissatisfaction or unsatisfaction. We're never going to be happy. But if our wants become what we need according to Yahweh, you know, which isn't a lot, uh, we're going to always be cheerful. And I meet people like this all the time, and it's, it's just great. And that's how I really know when I'm around people of Yahweh. It goes on to say here in Exodus 25, 8, when he, give, when he gave Moses the instructions, uh, he told Moses, you are to make the tabernacle according to everything that I show you. According to everything exactly how I've shown you. So this is pretty amazing because it, it, it gives us a point that we have to follow the instructions exactly. And if we stray away from his instructions, and many times people do this because they stop listening to their heart and their mind says, well, I could do it a better way. No, we can't do it a better way than Yahweh's instructions for us. And He meets our needs and our desires when we follow His instructions and His guidelines. So uh, we have to give according to His instructions exactly. And that's how we get the blessings uh, 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 exactly. Uh, so, you know, He told Moses exactly what to do and how to do it, and Moses listened. And I know a lot of people out there that try to cut corners and so on, and they run into problems. But the first thing Moses had to do was Moses had to listen and pay attention. I interviewed somebody on my, on my show once who uh, grew up in Israel. And he wasn't even a believer, but it was very uh, amazing that he said that, you know, in school they taught the Bible as, as daily lessons to the children. It wasn't even like they were teaching this as, you know, to religious students. They were teaching it as a daily lesson. Uh, they were just teaching the Bible as a textbook. And, and what they were teaching uh, was a lot of these lessons, like the tabernacle, the way things are supposed to be, or Noah's Ark, or a lot of the other uh, places in the scriptures. And he said, 99.9% uh, .9 of the times when the Bible describes something, and the measurements, and, and the height, and the width, and the area, uh, when, the, the, uh, when the people in Israel dug up these artifacts and found these places, they were exactly exactly to the point of the amount of height, width, and the instructions matched exactly what the Bible said. So these people followed Yahweh's instructions exactly, and they were blessed. And then we see what happens when we don't listen to Yahweh's instructions exactly. And we saw that with Moses and the rock. And we saw what happened with that. How Moses was uh, cursed to say because he didn't follow Yahweh's instructions exactly with the rock. Uh, so we have to follow Yahweh's instructions exactly if we want to get His blessings. Uh, so this week, you know, there's many references to this week's Torah portion in the, the, the Renewed Covenant. Uh, but this Torah portion was, uh, I found it to be excellent. And it's getting really exciting, folks, because it's giving the, the groundwork uh, for, the, for the temple to be built. Because this week there was a tabernacle, 
Uh, and uh, if you haven't read it, if it's one of those passages that you've usually sk skipped over, read it, folks, because there's so much to the temple service that we could use in life today. One of my friends who's a teacher, Rico Cortez, teaches a lot about the temple services, and he always says if you truly want to understand Yeshua and why Yeshua came, uh, understand the temple service, and then you'll understand uh, exactly what's going on. And another uh, teacher that I just interviewed recently was talking about uh, the clothes, the clothes of righteousness. A lot of people think it's the clothes that they talk about in the New Covenant. No, it's the clothes of the priest. And, and, and there's a reason why the breastplate with all the stones of the tribes and so much more and it covers all of this and those are the amazing clothes and uh, you know so there's so much we can get out of it here so check it out everybody it's Exodus 25 1 to 27 19 and everybody uh, don't forget I have a new podcast out now go to podomatic.com or just go to toralifeministries.org which is my website and go to the podcast page and you can see some of the the podcast that we do there every week, so you can download those right onto your podcast. And we also have uh, the our new website, the Raw Life Health Show, where we have a lot of uh, things pertaining to health. And I always teach health according to a biblical perspective. So if you want to go there and check that out, uh, that's rawlifehealthshow.com. And you can see many of the wonderful guests and shows we have on there. All right, everybody, uh, thank you for checking us out. Have a great Shabbat this coming uh, Sabbath. And if you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. Until then, everybody, uh, shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways.